It's time to set up a new image for my FreePlace CM3. And this video is not going to be a tutorial that covers in depth every single possibility for everything because there's too much, way too much. And I'm not going to pretend like I know the best way to do anything. So for example, I'm going to use a Mac and you might have a Windows PC. Um, and with all this kind of stuff, like uh, I just search it up though. So if I don't know how to do something, just search it up, trying to figure out the best way. And you might get stuck doing some of that, but this video might help you out fill in. It might fill in a blank or two for you. Or it might be interesting just to see how a normal person sets up an image like this. Or like, if you don't know, uh, actually, I don't know what you don't know. <laughs> Come to think of it, I don't even know what I don't know. Right? Is that, does that make sense? <laughs> and do you have to make sense all the time? These are the serious questions. <sighs> anyway, what was I doing? With? Oh, this flashing. Yes, we're going to flash this with a new image. I'm going to set up the controller with dual analog sticks and I'm going to test that out on a game. Probably set up like Wi-Fi uh, along the way. And I think, think that'll be good. So now to re-record that intro. Let's look at my setup. I have a USB hub. I usually use uh, this with the keyboard and the Wi-Fi dongle so I can get Wi-Fi running on the device, but now I don't need to have it built in. So I have my keyboard plugged in, my HDMI out goes through a capture device and to the TV. But normally I could just don't even need that. I just use the screen on here and then power. So to start, let's look at the free play site and grab our image. Let's go to setup, SD image files. Let's check out the readme. So we got some new stuff here. Backlight fix, joystick stuff. Oh, screen stuff, nice. New stuff to check out. Uh, let's see the newest image for the CM3 here is 1905-1002. 1905-1002, this one. Let's grab it. All right, well, that's downloading. Let's come on over here, I'm gonna insert my SD card and I'm going to start etcher. Now let's extract that. And flash it. I'm gonna select the image. Looks like it's the right drive already. And we flash it. Now we can close that and move on over to the device. Now the first time we start this up, it does some things like I think it expands the file system to take up the entire SD card. So it'll start up, it'll do some stuff and then it will turn itself off. So now let's turn this on for real. And the first thing I like to do is to change the keyboard into being a controller also. So I'll push start, go to configure input using the device controls. And I do want to configure the input. I'm going to hold a button on the keyboard and configure whatever buttons I want to be the controller. All right, the keyboard is now a controller so I can navigate the system just using the keyboard. Next, I want to connect to uh, my Wi-Fi network. But first, I need to go to Raspberry Config and to select uh, the country for the Wi-Fi. So we go to number four, localization setup, change the Wi-Fi set, blah, blah, blah. Country set to US. Now I can connect to the Wi-Fi network. Connect to Wi-Fi network. And there's mine. Let's 
looks good and exit I usually go into uh, change the device driver for the screen and that is here but I see right now it just it's automatically full screen right now in the new image so that's nice next thing I want to do is to set up SSH so I can come on down to Raspberry config put an interfacing SSH and I do want to have the SSH server enabled so I can access this remotely let me finish that another thing I really like to do is to um, or right away is to set up the keyboard to be uh, the US layout so to do that I'm going to bring up the terminal with F4 and I'm going to be a super user so sudo um, nano is the text editing uh, program and I, if I remember right it's in etc uh, default keyboard I think yes so I bring that down for some reason I always get confused on where this is saved so I'm going to change it from GB to US control O to overwrite enter to enter the same name and control X to exit. I'm just going to exit and reboot the device. You can do different ways to reboot from here, but I just like to exit it back to emulation station and then shut it down uh, through the menu. And then I will reboot. That way everything can take effect. So now everything's up and running. I'm going to SSH in from my Mac. I'm going to make sure I have the right IP address by going down to show IP. And it's 195. All right. So now that everything's pretty much set up here, I'm going to go to the Mac and use SSH and use the terminal there. I know you can just pull the terminal here and you can change the resolution settings and stuff like this probably, but I don't ever want to mess with that. So I'm just going to go to the Mac, use the terminal there and use SSH. So you can use, you can get to the terminal a bunch of different ways, command space and search for it. I have mine in a hotkey. And to SSH it is... Here we go. SSH, pi at, blah, blah, blah. That's the IP. The default password is Raspberry. So, first thing I want to do is set up the controller the right way. So let's go to the joystick uh, config file. I'm going to be super user, so it's going to be sudo. I'm going to use nano text editor. And I'll put this in the description also. All right. So now we need to find the options line that we want. Here we go. This next line is for use with two PSP 1000 analog sticks. I think that'll be it. So let's fix that up to work. So we're going to uncomment this one. And let's check this out. We have analog sticks. X1, Y1, X2, Y2 and the GPIO here. So after 42, the 43, and I want um, 41, so I don't need this one. 43, 41, 40, 35, and 36. 40, 35, 36, 35 and 36, those are my L3 and R3. I think that is right. 42, 43. And I'll put this in the description um, also. All right, let's try that out. So it can be Control O to overwrite, Enter to uh, overwrite that name, and then Control X to exit. I am going to exit, and um, I'm going to shut down and, and test this out. I'm going to use the keyboard as a controller. For start, go down to con configure input again, like we did before, because probably none of the buttons are going to be matched up the right way on the device yet until we do this. So holding a button on the free place the M3, and then we just assign all the buttons again. And it's looking good. So all the buttons, even the analog sticks are registering, but it's not uh, done yet. We need to put in the parameters for the analog sticks to read correctly. 
they would kind of work right now, but the sensitivity and stuff would be really off. So I'm going to uh, restart the device. I like to restart so it saves correctly and uh, you know all the changes take effect. Now we can set up the parameters. All right, so we are in. I'm going to move around the analog sticks in all the, all the directions. So all of the maximums are hit. So the system is kind of like, I think it's writing a file, keeping track of what the maximum um, for each axis is and the minimum. Now I'm going to kill the driver. we be super user, super user do. So, okay, yeah, this, this kills the driver. Now to get some information, I don't know what this stands for. Uh, a friend of mine, Guillaume, he told me how to do this. So I'm just sort of copying him. All right, DMESG, that gives us all of this. And this is what we want. With all of the minimums and maximums for the axis. Looks good. Now I'm going to restart the driver by typing in the same thing there, except for I'm going to remove that minus R. So now with these values, we can put these into the config file for the controller, and that should be that should be that. So we're going to go back to make our joystick config. Here is our active line. I'm going to put these parameters for the analog sticks right before the GPIO stuff. No, not that. Right in here. And if I remember right, it's, it's the X1 params and we do the minimum, then the maximum, um, a fuzz, and then a dead zone. I don't really remember what fuzz is. Um, so let's do this. We'll do the minimums, the maximums, the fuzz. I know the value of fuzz was 16. And then the dead zone value is 300. So x1 params equals I think that's right here. So we have the addresses for the axis here. Right after that, I added the parameters. X1 params equals the minimum, the maximum, the fuzz, and then the dead zone. So Y1 params equals the minimum, the maximum, the fuzz, and then the dead zone. X2 and then Y2. And then just as it was before, it picks right up with the GPIO. So with those in there correctly, if they are correctly, I hope I, I hope they are. <laughs> then um, the game should be nice and smooth when, when we test it. And we will know shortly. So control O to overwrite, enter, control X to exit. And while I am here, I'm not going to reboot that or anything right now. Instead, I'm going to transfer this game to um, the device. So I'm going to use CyberDuck on Windows. It would be, what is it, WinSCP, I think. So this is a Nintendo 64 game. I'm going to drop that file into RetroPie, ROMs, N64. And that's that. So now I'm going to reboot the device and do some testing. Alright, the analog stick seems to have some pretty good play to it. I'm not going to remap all my buttons and stuff right now, I just want to get this working.
This one won't be able to test because this one is acting as the C buttons. But I mean, if one is working, I'm sure the other one's fine. Normally, of course, when I'm not on video, I would check it all and make sure everything's perfect, but this is good enough for now. Okay. So I think the last thing I want to try and do is just show how I would um, back up my uh, SD card. So once you get all of the settings done, you want it to be perfect. You want it to stay that way. So you make a backup in case you ever mess up the settings like I do a lot. You can just reflash your backup. All right, I have my SD card in my Mac. I'm gonna pull up uh, Disk Utility. Disk Utility. And let's go with uh, this drive here. This is the card. So I'm gonna go to File, New Image. Uh, image, image from generic storage device. You can memorize that hotkey if you're going to do this a lot. The hotkey combo. Or a shortcut combo. Whatever it is. Name. Let's just do CM3. I'm going to put that on the desktop. Format. Let's do CD master. CD DVD master. Encryption none. And save. Now that's going to write... Uh, write the file for us. All right, now that that's done, we can take the image here and just rename the extension from CDR to ISO. Now we can use this uh, file in Etcher. We can burn, or we can flash new SD cards, and yay. So that is pretty much that. And everything, like I said, this is just how I do it. There's a million better ways to do it or tons of different ways to accomplish the same thing. So I'm gonna put all of the text kind of stuff that I can in the description. Um, the file location and stuff like that. The options line. And so I guess that's about it. So hopefully, um, hopefully this can help you out. If I can edit it up so it's not too boring, that'd be nice too. And uh, thanks for watching.